Thanks for clicking on the video. This is Unholy Vision. You're watching OS vs. GPU, a series where I go to an OS and I relay my experience with NVIDIA and AMD graphics. Today on the agenda, we have Pop OS. The first thing upon booting into the system, you'll see it's a GNOME install, a customized GNOME, GNOME, whichever you want to say. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it's manageable. And of course, my first steps in this adventure to Pop OS. I had a few problems with my Vega 64 and these multiple monitors. I've never had this happen in Arch, but on this right here, every time my screens would be flickering on off black. And I thought, hey, you know, maybe this is the dynamic power management because my screens are over the 120 range. They're 165 hertz. I turned that off, still having that problem. And it turns out my settings for sound were getting reset every time. And on a uh, actual boot and my device settings here for each monitor kept going back down to 59.95 hertz. And it does this for every freaking monitor, every reboot. I haven't really dove into why, but I mean, I have an XORG configuration for this on the Vega 64. It's not flickering now because I switched over to a NVIDIA card, my RTX 2080 Ti, and the NVIDIA drivers on it just seem to be managing this a lot better than the AMD GPU driver. I, for this actual distribution, don't know uh, why exactly. I didn't try a higher version or see if there was a higher version of Mesa or even try the AMD VLK driver. I just rolled with it. And even on the NVIDIA side of thing with an Xorg, I keep getting this overriding my monitor's refresh rates. And it's quite annoying having to go every freaking time and have to reapply all this. But that's one little pet peeve I have with this so far my problems in this everything else regardless of sound and the monitor seems to just keep working and dial in the settings even my power management and everything is in there i did have a problem with the power savings with the blank screen on amd vega 64 for whatever reason when it blanked the screen it would go to the lock screen and one of my monitors would uh, be on and it wouldn't be the one with the login screen. Instead, it would be just one random monitor. All the other ones were completely black and they wouldn't come back on until I went to the display device settings here and just open this up and then all of a sudden they all powered right back on. I haven't had that problem with the settings here with power saving on on or off here on the NVIDIA side, but that's just some weird little hiccup I had as well with my Vega 64. Out of the box, it does start with Firefox, but I replaced that with Waterfox. That's the only real major change I did. I installed Steam, Discord, and all the like gamer-related stuff so that we could see the overall performance of the system when it's got that running. It doesn't take too much of the core, and yeah, the whole color scheme here, it looks like somebody's peeing all over my screen when you try to snap a window. I don't know what they were going with with yellow there, but it is it is what it is. The system with all this running, of browser and everything it's not too bad i didn't expect that bad anyway but this is the result the pop shop's pretty clean it has just about everything you need in here my only real gripe would be discord for whatever reason discord is not in here just typing it in you can sudo apt install it so I don't know why it didn't make it into the pop shop since it's basically a common app at this point. And if you're a new user, you're probably not going to be on the terminal, especially if you're transitioning from Windows right away. 
don't know why they didn't include that when they have it in their repositories, but that is what it is. Steam is pretty commonly found here, and it shows you Lutris right away as well. OBS is a little cluttered, in my opinion. Um, you type in OBS, thinking, you know, OBS, and you get all this other stuff that is not even remotely related to it. And it's somewhere in here. Here, here we go, right there. Right over Open Box Configuration Manager. The settings for Pop Shop is pretty limited for the most part. You can control the update sources and your sources in general, add more. So maybe you could get Discord in there out of the box, but you don't have much control. The appearance stuff is pretty standard GNOME related stuff for the most part. You can do a dark mode. You can do a slim mode so you get it a little bit thinner up here. And the backgrounds and everything, they do have their own custom stuff for Pop OS. As mentioned, I did start this adventure sort of as a new user, and I plot my Vega 64 GPU in there and grabbed the Intel and AMD ISO, installed it, and called it a day pretty much. Played around for a while, and then it's time to upgrade. Like, you know, a lot of people do, they upgrade over time. And in this case, it was an NVIDIA card I'm plopping in there. But before I switched out the GPUs, I did make sure I disabled any settings in Grub for that. Updated Grub, restarted, put the NVIDIA card in. And upon booting, the Display Manager or Login Screen, whichever one you want to actually call it, did pop up. But when you're trying to log in using the Nuva driver, Xorg server, for whatever reason, it kept crashing right back to the login screen. Again, the display server. Again, whichever one you would call it. And I couldn't proceed any further than that. The options on on there are for changing your DE and or window manager, which one you have installed. In this case, it's GNOME. Um, wasn't listed as gnome shell classic or anything like that there's only one option which is the gnome shell which is renamed to pop os so that that was a big big no-go at that point so i had to pop into a tty and do a apt search for nvidia because for whatever reason they do not name these nvidia drivers a decent name instead they name it something like this right here system 76 driver nvidia as a new user i don't think many people would be going oh i need system 76 driver dash nvidia poor naming on their part i really highly believe that and poor design for making this x org X server X org video Nova actually not work with GNOME even if you're using the AMD one because people change video cards come on so that's a big problem there no classic GNOME shell to fall back to if it was using Wayland and for some reason it didn't like the Wayland install of it and that's just a big problem in my opinion and that's pretty much it for this distribution I mean it's just gnome and nothing really special other than a few little tweaks and whatnot I mean even the gnome shell no real changes here and you have your virtual desktops over here if you want to add more and drag something to it whatever like like so you could drag it and then make more you know, just drag it around.